Bienvenidas y bienvenidos a la lección número 10 de español. Comenzamos. Como cada día, voy a recordaros las cosas que necesitamos para la clase. Necesitamos una libreta, un boli, o negro o azul o verde, un lápiz, una goma, un ordenador o una tablet o un móvil y manejar nuestra Google Site, donde tenemos todos los recursos. Vamos a ver qué es lo que vamos a hacer hoy. Uh, the learning objective of today is uh, I can understand what cubism is and I can make cubism portraits with different materials. Okay, we are going to be working on that. So, uh, as every day we'll be revising la fecha, el tiempo, this is la, las rutinas en español, and then we will be working on formas geométricas, partes de la cara, and then Pablo Picasso and Cubism. This is what we are going to be doing today, okay? So, as every day, you need to write the date and you need to write about the weather. Um, I'm going to be showing you this, so if you need um, to write down uh, the day of the week and the month of the year to get the right spelling, you post the video here, okay? And try to write the date. And um, do the same in here, write about the weather. Okay, you can pause the video if you need to. Now, I am assuming you have paused the video and you have already written the date and the weather. So, today, la fecha for me is um, miércoles, oops, not capital letters, miércoles, 24 de junio, junio, remember J, de 2020. Ok, now, uh, ¿qué tiempo hace hoy? Well, I have a look at the window, miro a la ventana. Hoy está nublado, that's for me, y hace calor. Ok, and now uh, you've got this question here. Escribe tres figuras geométricas. Ok, so uh, last week we were working on shapes, figuras geométricas. I'm giving you some examples here, but I'm, I'm only asking you about three, tres. So you can choose what uh, shapes you want to uh, write down. Um, I'm going to be writing down um, cuadrado. which is this one, and then triangulo, which is this one, and then círculo. Círculo, which is this one, okay? Cuadrado, cuadrado, triángulo, círculo, and then this is rectángulo. Ok, but if you wrote rectángulo, círculo, triángulo, or any of the three, sorry, any of the four, that is correct. There is also um, an, another, I mean, two more. So we've got cuadrado, triángulo, círculo, rectángulo, rombo y óvalo. Ok, these are the shapes that I would like you to uh, be familiar with. Okay, so um, we are going to watch a video now about figuras geométricas. Um, I'm going to show you, this is your lesson 10 about Pablo Picasso. And if we, go, if we click in here, figuras geométricas, I've just opened the page so we don't have to wait. We go on to here. We are going to watch this video again because uh, I think it's really good for... Um, las figuras geométricas. Vamos a divertirnos con las figuras geométricas. Círculo. Triángulo. Cuadrado. Rectángulo 
¿Dónde está el círculo en este dibujo? ¡Muy bien! La pelota que tiene forma de círculo. ¿Puedes encontrar el triángulo? ¡Excelente! El techo de la casa tiene forma de triángulo. ¿Puedes encontrar el cuadrado en este dibujo? ¡Buen trabajo! El regalo tiene forma de cuadrado. ¿Y el rectángulo dónde está? ¡Muy bien! El cuadro en la pared tiene forma de rectángulo. ¡Círculo! ¡Triángulo! ¡Cuadrado! ¡Rectángulo! ¡Las figuras geométricas! ¡Lo hiciste muy bien! ¡Haz clic en la tres! So, uh, this is uh, about las figuras geométricas. We are going back to our lesson now. So, remember, cuadrado, triángulo, círculo, rectángulo, rombo, óvalo. I would like you now to focus on the spelling of these um, shapes. Cuadrado, triángulo, círculo, rectángulo, rombo, óvalo. Okay, try to read them. You can pause the video if you want to. Uh, read them carefully and see how much you remember because after you uh, read them, we are going to do a test, okay? So, pause the video if you need to, read them thoroughly. Okay, so I am assuming now that you have read uh, thoroughly the, the words and you uh, remember more or less how to spell uh, some of the shapes. I've done, I'm giving you these ones, ovalo, Rombo, we'll work on this maybe next week. Uh, and let's see if you remember how to write this one. I'm giving you the first letter. How to write this one. Again, the first letter, this one, and this one. You can pause the video now and try to write them, or you can carry on listening because I'm going to pronounce them. So this is going to be another option if you feel that you need some help, okay? So, you can pause the video now or you can listen to me and then try to write the, the words. So, this would be rectángulo. And remember, A, E, I, O, U, they always sound the same. So, if I say re, it will be E. Okay? Rectángulo. Círculo. Now, if I say I, it will be a, E, I, and nothing else. Círculo. This one here, it will be triángulo. Triángulo. And the last one, cuadrado. Cuadrado. Okay? Now, I'm going to write the words rectángulo. Rectángulo. And we've got this little line on here because that's like this where the stress is. Rectángulo. Círculo. Círculo. Triángulo. Triángulo. En cuadrado. Cuadrado. Okay. So this is how your words should be spelled. If you've got anything uh, wrong, please correct it and write the word um, that you haven't got right uh, for two or three times. Three times would be great because then you will remember, okay? So uh, now we are going to watch a video about shapes because I really want you to, to get this right, okay? Okay, so I'm here in my Figuras Geométricas page and we are going to listen and watch this video. ¿Qué pasa? ¿No sabes dibujar? No te preocupes.
preocupes, un secreto te voy a contar. Todo lo que ves con formas geométricas lo puedes hacer. So that would be Tiene cuatro lados y todos son iguales. Esquinas muy rectas y sus ángulos también. Casas o ventanas, todas tienen su forma. Yo creo que ya sabes quién puede ser. El cuadrado, el cuadrado tiene cuatro lados. Son todos iguales, uno, dos, tres y cuatro. What this video says is that everything you see, todo lo que ves, everything you see, you can make it, you can draw it with shapes. Eh, todo lo que ves con formas geométricas, tú lo puedes hacer. Todo lo que ves, todo lo que ves con formas geométricas, tú lo puedes hacer. So everything you see, everything you see, you can draw with shapes. Okay, and this is very much related to cubism, which is what we are going to be focusing today. Cubism is what um, uh, Picasso, Pablo Picasso used in many of his art, okay, pieces of art. So, okay, so we are going back to our lesson and we have the figuras geométricas, rectángulo, círculo, triángulo, cuadrado, óvalo, rombo. All right, so we've been doing, um, yeah, We've been doing, sorry, uh, the routines. We've been doing shapes. And now I would like you to uh, uh, remember a little bit about Pablo Picasso and what we were doing, we were learning last week. Also for uh, working on shapes, uh, you've got, if you go onto your page, um, as I always say, this is the page for lesson 10, Pablo Picasso. You've got here a link 
to the uh, section of the site where I've got lots of videos about Pablo Picasso. This is the link for um, figuras geométricas, shapes, and this is a quiz for partes del cuerpo that we will be doing later. But I also wanted to show you that if you go in here at the end, there is this uh, live worksheet that you can do um, to work on the shapes, okay? So um, it's, you need, it says, add click en el nombre de la figura. So this is for working the spelling. So we've got here this shape, we know it's cuadrado, so we click on cuadrado, okay? Which one do you think this one is? Exactly, triangulo. We click on here. You can do this uh, after the lesson, okay? Because I've, I've uploaded lots of different wor uh, live worksheets. Then, círculo, exactly. Rectángulo. Rombo. And this one would be óvalo, okay? Once you finish, let's revise, cuadrado, triángulo, círculo, rectángulo, rombo, óvalo. Once you finish, you say finish. Sometimes it will be in Spanish, sometimes it will be in English. In this case, it's in English, finish. And then, as I always say, you go on to check my answers. You don't email them to me, you go on to check my answers. Okay. And in our case, we've got 10 out of 10 uh, because we've got 100%. Okay, so this is, as I said, uh, in your lesson 10. Uh, here, there will be also the presentation and the video that I'm recording now, okay, which is, you cannot see now because I'm doing it. But as you see, these are live worksheets for parts of the body, for cubism I'll be explaining later. And also, this one is for uh, shapes. Okay, all right, so let's go back now to um, Pablo Picasso. So Pablo Picasso fue un pintor español que nació en Málaga. Remember, this is London, this is Spain, and Málaga is here, so I've made up, I've posted here a bigger picture of Spain. This is Portugal, that's why it's white, and this is France. So this is Spain, and this is where Málaga is. And this is where Picasso was from, Málaga, okay? Now, I'm just revising a little uh, some of the concepts I was uh, uh, talking, telling you last week. So this is Pablo Picasso, he was, era un pintor, nació en Málaga y pintó desde niño. Niño, remember the word niño? Okay, so since he was a child, he was already painting. Uh, he started painting when he was like around eight, and I will be showing you some of the paints uh, he, he did when he was about your age. Obviously, he was a genius, right? And um, he was able to paint uh, very, very, very well. So he studied um, in Madrid and Barcelona. He lived in Paris. And remember that I told you about uh, El Periodo Azul. He had different periods in his um, professional life. El periodo azul, it was like this uh, part of his life in which he was very sad because a friend of his of him died. So that's called el periodo azul and he painted everything in azul. Then he fell in love and he got married and he was very happy. So he painted everything like in pink and rosa. And then uh, cubism came and we are going to be talking about cubism, el cubismo. Here, this is a self-portrait of Pablo Picasso. And you can see here cubism as well, because as you can see, he started using different shapes to uh, make his um, drawings. In this case, un autorretrato, self-portrait, autorretrato, okay? All right, this is just for you to remember, he had this periodo azul, and this is called Evocación, and uh, it's about the mm, Entierro de Casagemas, okay? Also, Mendigos Junto al Mar, 
like homeless by the seaside. Hmm? Oops. And then during his per pe periodo rosa, uh, we've got these um, uh, pictures like artistas, madre e hijo, eh? artists, mom and son, uh, because he loved the circus and all the uh, artists that work for the circus. And this is una familia de saltimbanquis, a family that would be working in the circus. Okay. Okay. So I'm um, just reminding you about El Guernica, which is this uh, big picture that he made during the civil, the Spanish Civil War. A civil war is a war that happens in the country between people from the same country. And this is what happened in Spain for three years. He was living in France at that time, but uh, he wanted to, um, to show his suffering and the suffering of the Spanish um, population because of the war. And he painted this um, picture. It's called El Guernica. It's very famous and it's uh, exhibited in Madrid, in Museo Reina Sofia. Now, um, also, uh, I would like you to do this, um, work, uh, this uh, live worksheet, which is about El Picasso, okay? And you, I'll do it with you now, but you can do it later uh, when you have time. In El, in El Guernica, we can see uh, different things. You, you need to uh, look closely because uh, there are so many things that you can see. Okay? Can you see a bull here? Un toro. And now, and this is supposed, I mean, this is a woman with a baby. Okay? So this is one part of the, of the, of the picture. Okay? A woman suffering, crying, and this is the bull, which is also the symbol of Spain. Un toro y una mujer y un bebé. Okay, so um, we should be posting this in here. Okay, now uh, what else can we see? We can see a house, una casa, that is like in fire, probably because of the attacks and the bombs and everything, and people suffering again. So this would go in here. Oops. Let me see. And finally, we can see a horse, un caballo, also uh, uh, suffering. Everybody suffers when there is a, a war. And um, this could be like a soldier, that's what they say, uh, with a flower, maybe demanding peace. Okay. And this goes here. So this is uh, El Guernica, and now you're more familiar with this uh, picture, okay? It's in color, but the real one, uh, the one that is uh, in Madrid, I've seen that one, um, it's in black and white, El Guernica, okay? Now, after that, and already during the Guernica, when he painted El Guernica, there was, um, he started uh, using this uh, technique, El Cubismo. And I showed you last week this uh, picture, which is one of my favorites, Mujer Llorando, Weeping Woman. Now, you probably think, oh, that is a bit crazy um, because that face is really strange. Like, if you were going to draw a face, you wouldn't draw a face like this, one eye is like looking at one side and the other one at the other side, and then it's like all these shapes, but like, um, like if it was like a puzzle that you were like putting together, but then um, it doesn't fit very well. This is this has to be with cubism, and um, I would like you to um, watch a video that I think is very good for understanding cubism. Okay, we are gonna watch the video now, but before I would like you to revise some parts of the of the head um, in Spanish. We've done that before, but let's just revise going through them. So we've got pelo, remember pelo, cejas, ojos, nariz, boca, orejas, mejillas, 
y cuello. ¿Ok? This is for you to revise uh, parts of the face. We'll go on to this later. So, talking about cubism, I told you that I would like you to watch a video to understand cubism and why when you look at a picture uh, with, uh, that is uh, made uh, following this technique, cubism, it looks like so strange. Okay? So, uh, if we go in here, this is Pablo Picasso. We are going to go on to Pablo Picasso's page uh, using the link, as I showed you, that you've got in your lesson 10. And uh, we are go there are so many videos here that you could watch, but um, we are going to watch now one um, that is made, uh, uh, recorded in English. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, make a sil I mean, mute it, and I'll be explaining because obviously I want you to uh, to listen to Spanish when you do Spanish. Okay. So this is the one that I want you to watch. Okay. Just. I hope you can hear me when I'm talking. It's cardboard portrait. Um, so Picasso was a great painter, but he was also a great sculptor. Well, you could read that. I don't have to read it for you. He often used found materials like cardboard and everything. See, this is uh, this is one of the versions of Whitman. So we are going to make a cardboard portrait. Start okay. With so now I'm going to stop this. Now um, we are going to watch the video now together. I'll be explaining, but maybe I would propose you to. Uh, try to get these um, materials that we are going to be using during the video. We are going to be watching this person used uh, uh, using during the video because maybe you could do the same uh, in the class with your teachers or at home. Picasso never used like very expensive materials as I, as, you, as I have already read and you've read. He used anything he found. Okay. Now I'm going to mute this. And I'm going to, let me see, because I don't want, okay, so let's, let's see. So, usa una, un cartón, un cartón, y él dibuja una especie similar to um, what we would say a, an óvalo, more or less, because this is going to be la cara. And Picasso's portraits are seen from many points of view. Okay, we are going to understand very soon this. Así que dibujamos un óvalo, similar to an óvalo, that's going to be like your, like somebody's face. Okay, a head shape. And then, this is what he starts doing. Coge rectángulos de cartón, cartón es cardboard, y los pega con pegamento, pegamento, glue, o cola, él los va pegando, ok, y pone uno, dos, tres rectángulos, tres rectángulos, y lo pega sobre otra cartulina. Ok, now, this is very interesting because what he does here, see, this is the shape with a side view nose, and this is the, the key uh, thing about cubism. When you watch uh, a piece of art uh, following the cubism technique, uh, maybe half of the face will be like looking at you, but for the other half of the face, what the artists uh, use is like a side view face, which means that it's like in the same piece of art, you will be seeing uh, the face from different points of view, okay? So what he does is he, draw, he draws this side view nose, 
he cuts it out, look, la corta, le pega rectángulos con pegamento y la pega encima, on top of the face. So we can see half of the picture is like a front face, but the other half of the picture is like a side face. And the same is going to happen con los ojos, okay? We will have un ojo de frente, that's un ojo, y un ojo de perfil. We say de perfil, like on one side. So, can you see that? This is like el ojo en la cara, pero now you can see the side view eye, el ojo de perfil con eyelashes, con um, pestañas. Those are pestañas. So this is the key, the secret of, uh, for understanding cubism. See, half of the picture is like looking at you at the front and the other one is like on, on, uh, on a side view. This is really um, the key. Now, when you see this, um, as I said, um, this is a cubism piece of art and, um, and you will understand better. Now, these are the cheeks. So he uses like a front side cheek and a front view. And the same with the mouth. Okay, and maybe, just maybe, you could uh, do this at home or in the school. And that would be your piece of art. And then you can carry on adding lots of different details, like eyebrows, ears, hair, anything you want to add, okay? So one eyebrow, see, is like from the side view, but the other eyebrow is like the front uh, view. Y el pelo. It's a bit crazy, huh? but it's, it's, it's nice. Así que tenemos el pelo, una oreja, otra oreja, un ojo que nos mira de frente, un ojo que nos mira de perfil, side view, ceja, mejillas, nariz, boca. I think that this is a nice video because it shows you like the key um, for understanding what cubism is. And as I said, uh, I would propose you to uh, try to do it at home. You only need like some card, you can find that in a box, some, uh, a, 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 some scissors and glue. That's what you need, okay? And a pencil. So now, uh, see, this is, if you look at here, this is a face, like a side view face, una cara de perfil, el ojo, la ceja, la oreja, la mejilla, la boca y el pelo. And on the other side, you can see a front side face, una cara de frente. Now, if you have a look at it all together, you, you feel like, oh, there's something strange here. But now that you understand um, how uh, Picasso talked, I mean, worked with cubism and even subrealism, uh, you can understand better how uh, he uh, made his pieces of art. And also, look at all the time he made everything using shapes, right? Different shapes. So, yeah, that's what I wanted you to, to watch para entender el cubismo. These are the steps. This is another one. Hmm. Again, see, another one from these uh, different sides, a man, a boy, or another one. This ojo, este ojo mira de frente, y este ojo mira de perfil. So many examples. Anything is possible in cubism. So please feel welcome to be 
um, creative. Okay? So that's a video that I thought it would be really good for you to watch. Now, um, so this is about cubism and now when you have a look you will probably understand much better these pictures. Okay? Uh, as I said, uh, we've got here um, partes del cuerpo, partes de la cabeza, de la cara, and uh, I also wanted you to go through these uh, live worksheets you can see here. Uh, there are so many, and you can practice uh, with them. So, ojos, ojos, okay. Boca. Boca. Nariz. Nariz. Oreja. Oreja. Okay? So that's one thing. That's one of the worksheets. Uh, when you listen to it. Ojos. La imagen. Boca. Nariz. Oreja. Oreja. Now you've got others here for uh, partes de la cabeza. Okay? Now, um, so, uh, los retratos de Picasso, as I said, se ven de diferentes, desde diferentes perspectivas. All right? So, what I want you to do now is, um, we are going to be working on this uh, retrato, and again, as you can see, I'm giving you here the steps for drawing un retrato como este. Ok, so, uh, uh, tenemos que coger el folio, la hoja, the piece of paper, and what he does is he divides this in four parts, as you can see. So this is going to be good for reference. And then he starts drawing la cara y en el medio la nariz. ¿Sí? El cuello y un ojo que es como de perfil, like a side view, y la boca de perfil también, like in profile, like one side. And then he does the other part, which is this, the, el ojo de frente, y así tenemos una oreja, una ceja, un ojo, y una boca de perfil, like side view. Y la otra parte de la cara, el, la ceja, el ojo, la boca y la oreja de frente, front view. And then you do the hair, and then you can color it. So this is something that I would like you to do as well. You can pause the video, but before we are going to watch uh, another video um, on how to do this, I've given you the steps. However, we are going to watch a video and then uh, we can uh, pause this and uh, try to draw our portrait, okay? So, uh, this is Picasso and this is the video that I would like you to watch about La Técnica del Cubismo. <laughs> what I would like you to do now. I would like you to pause the video and do this, but because we are learning Spanish, it would be great if after that you could label uh, the parts of the face, las partes de la cara, en español. If you don't want to um, label your piece of art, 
you could um, write them down somewhere else so you can practice. I just want you to make sure, I mean, I just want to make sure that you learn and you work um, on the parts of the face. Uh, it's, rem it's just a reminding because we've done this before, but it's always good to revise, okay? So yeah, that, that's what I would like you to do. And, and that's it. Basically, uh, this is our lesson today. Um, we know who Pablo Picasso is. And we understand and know the basic shapes. Uh, we've revised uh, parts of the body and now we know, uh, we understand about cubism. So um, as I always say, uh, there are so many things here for you to watch um, again. And, um, and also uh, you've got quizzes, you've got interactive white, uh, life, uh, worksheets that you could use for revising. In this case, I'm going to leave you now watching this uh, video about cardboard uh, Picasso faces, okay? Because this is nice. Uh, it's very long, so we will watch a few minutes. And then- Our project uh, is based on the artwork of Pablo Picasso. Remember him? I'm going to mute the child prodigy went to art school at the age of 11, he mastered the real- now, this, what he's saying here is that Pablo Picasso, he made this portrait um, when he was like, I don't know, maybe eight years old, nine years old. Now look at the detail um, and, 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 and the uh, perfection of this project, of this art, piece of art. Uh, Pablo Picasso was able to do these things when he was very little. So by the time he was uh, young, young, but older than that, he was tired of making these perfect, 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 perfect uh, pictures. So he decided to play a little bit with art. And that's why he liked cubism, like, you know, um, playing with the view, the sides, the side view, the, the, the way you look at, at, at a piece of art. And that's why uh, he also liked surrealism because uh, that was also great fun for him, okay? Yeah, he was able to draw all this. This is his blue period, el periodo azul, and then el periodo rosa, and then cubism, okay? And, this, and then that's when cubism starts. And, um, and then I would like you to have a look about the materials uh, you need to uh, make this uh, portrait. Uh, ink card, tijeras, regla if you want to, pencil, paints if you have them, but you saw the other one was just in white. Some card from a box, okay? And then you can start like drawing and um, let me see, yeah, cutting, pieces, drawing, and you can start doing your own uh, portraits. Yeah. You can use a ruler, una regla para hacer shapes, para hacer las figuras. Okay, I'm just uh, forwarding it so we don't have to do it so long and then you cut it and you can use any shape, right? Any shape. And then remember the other day we were like making um, shapes on top of our um, portrait. So what she's, this person is doing now is painting in different colors. You can do that or you can't, you don't have to. Um, any type of texture, see? And um, yeah, and then he starts, or she starts, I don't know if this is a man or a woman, cutting pieces and gluing them on top. And that's the way uh, Picasso used to work. Okay, sí, está haciendo un ojo, la nariz, and then he paints everything. But as you saw in the other video, if you don't have paints, uh, that's fine. You leave it in white or you color it with any other thing and that's fine, see? I think this is a, a good video for you to have a look on how to make um, these portraits. 
see again once i is like uh, front side and the other one is uh, um, on the like looking at the front and um yeah and then he makes all these shapes like triangles for making a la boca triangulos para hacer la boca triangulos para las cejas y círculos let's see what he makes with this círculo oh las mejillas one mejilla una mejilla es un círculo otra mejilla es un triángulo porque está de perfil right so Eh, en las cejas son diferentes si están de perfil o de frente. Okay. La oreja y el pelo. Look at the pelo. Es pelo, es rizado. Okay. And that is the, uh, that is the final uh, result. Okay. Um, so, as I said, uh, go ahead, try. And nos vemos la semana próxima. Adiós. Stay safe.